Hey guys! So three years ago in December 2019, I went to Japan for the first time, specifically Tokyo. It was a really special trip for me because it was my first time traveling abroad by myself, so it really made me feel like I'd grown up a little bit. Little did I know, uh, I still had slash have a long way to go. But anyway, after I got back from Japan, unfortunately the whole COVID situation hit the world and I wasn't able to go back. But two weeks ago, for the first time in three years, I was back in Tokyo. Hey guys, so right now I'm in an area of Tokyo called Ningyocho. The reason I'm here is because I'm going to recreate a photo that I shot three years ago, last time I was here. So there's a kuroke shop here called Imahan. And it was so delicious, so I'm going to come back and get another kroke and recreate the photo and eat it. So here's a picture of me three years ago, and here's me recreating the photo three years later. And this is me enjoying a delicious kroke. It was just as delicious as I remembered. Hey guys, right now it's about 12pm in Tokyo, and I'm on my way to Shibuya to find something to eat for lunch. There's also a Pokemon Center there with an awesome Mewtwo, which I want to go see again. It's really cold in Tokyo at the moment. In the daytime, it's around 10 degrees, and then in the nighttime, it's around 5 or 6 degrees. So kind of a similar feeling to when I was in Seoul. But this time, I came well prepared. I have more warm clothes with me. Hopefully, there won't be any shivering or complaints about how cold it is. Let's head to the train station. I'll see you guys again in Shibuya. After a 10 minute ride on the train, I arrived in Shibuya. So Shibuya is most famous for the Shibuya crossing, which unfortunately I didn't get any footage of because there were way too many people and I'm shy. Also, stupid of me decided to go to Shibuya, one of the most busiest places in Tokyo, on the weekend. So there was like a bajillion people there, which is why I'm posing so awkwardly next to this promotion for the new Pokemon games. After that, I arrived at the department store with the Pokemon Center. Aside from the Pokemon Center, there are a bunch of other great stores, such as the Capcom store, where you can get merch from titles such as Street Fighter and uh, whatever these things are. There's also the Jump Store where you can get merch for all your favorite Shonen Jump series such as One Piece, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, Spy Family, and even Slam Dunk. One of the coolest things in this store was a wall where you can compare your height to your favorite anime character. I was around the same height as Luffy. Also, my favorite character from My Hero Academia is Bakugo. This is a figure I have of him in my room. It was pretty cool to find out I'm slightly taller than him. Then I headed over to the Pokemon Center where I got to meet up with my old buddy Mewtwo. He was doing well. Across from the Pokemon Center is the Nintendo Store, and it's honestly one of the coolest stores in the world. Obviously, it's full of Nintendo merch from all of your favorite Nintendo games, but unfortunately, since it was so packed, I couldn't exactly get in straight away. So there's actually a really long line to get into the Nintendo Store. You have to get a ticket, like this one here. So right now, it's about 12.30, so I need to wait at least an hour before getting into the Nintendo store. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go get something to eat. I think there's a very nice tempura store around here. So there's a lot of people everywhere. So there's pretty much lines to get into every restaurant, especially at lunchtime. So I gotta get in queue and line up, show you guys some delicious Japanese tempura. After a 30 minute wait, I was in. So up until now, whenever I've had tempura, it usually comes out in a big bowl all at once. But at this store, they serve it a few pieces at a time. That's because tempura is most delicious when it's served hot. So you get to eat every piece at its most delicious. <laughs> and of course, it tasted amazing. And then here's me uh, eating it too quickly and realizing that it's too hot for my mouth. Unfortunately, because of the wait, I didn't get back to the Nintendo store in time. But at least the food was nice. So I didn't make it back to the store by 2 p.m. And unfortunately, because there's so many people, they only give out one of these tickets per person per day. So while walking around and exploring Shibuya, I came across this interestingly named cafe. I guess they sell eggs? One thing that I really wanted to do while I was in Tokyo was find as many cool vending machines as possible. I don't know why, but I really just think vending machines are really cool and futuristic. I didn't end up finding as many as I wanted to, but I did find a few. So let me show you what I found. This vending machine sells cigarettes, which I thought was really interesting because in other countries, usually they're like hidden back behind a counter, but this one you can just buy on the street. This one sells obento, which are like little boxed meals. This next one sells products from Toyama Prefecture. So for example, it has tea and other locally made snacks. This one sells ladies tights and this one sells jewelry. Neat. So it's not Christmas yet in Tokyo, but there's already a lot of beautiful Christmas illuminations, which you can see behind me. 
and these are all over the city there's a lot of christmas trees and nice lights kind of getting me into the holiday spirit and of course the cold weather this is probably one of my favorite things about coming to tokyo at this time of year in december is all the wonderful illuminations so right now i'm in an area of tokyo called kamedo and i'm going to go and have hormon for dinner hormon is like grilled beef but not just beef hormon are like the innards of the animal so like intestines and stuff like that it doesn't sound like the best but after i had it for the first time it was really really delicious so happy to be back here for the first time in three years so let's go get some dinner this is the menu so whilst I would say I'm moderately proficient at Japanese, I can't read half of this menu. And to be honest, it's probably better that way because if I knew what I was eating, I might not be able to eat it. So here I am being a goofball waiting for the food to come and here's me grilling it for real. And of course, it was super duper delicious. It was just as, or maybe more delicious than I remember it being. I ordered a ramune, which is like Japanese soda, and there's a marble in the top that you need to push down to open it, and this is me failing at it. And after figuring out my mistake, I was able to open it on my second go. Surprisingly, I was able to open it with minimal spillage, and it tasted good. After dinner, I hopped on the train and headed back to my hotel. There's so many cool things about Japanese trains and train stations. For example, there's a screen like this that shows all the upcoming stations and exactly how many minutes it takes to arrive at each one. There are also women's only carriages, which are available during commuting times, which is a cool little safety thing. For the women, one of my favorite manga of all time, Chainsaw Man, has an anime airing at the moment. So there was heaps of promotion for that inside the train, which was really cool to see. Also in the train station, I came across one of my favorite Japanese groups, King and Prince. Kishikun! And in one train station, I even came across a cute little aquarium. Look at how cute it is! One of my favorite things to do when I'm overseas, especially during winter, is just walk around and kind of get lost. So right now, I'm in an area of Tokyo called Ginza, and I heard there were some wild Pokemon loose, so I made it my mission to go and find them. They were surprisingly easy to find. Turns out they were just chilling at Mr. Donut. One thing that was crazy was they had self-serve cash registers. So this is probably really normal for Japanese people, but this is the first one I'd ever seen in my whole life. It was like being in the future. They were a little bit different to how they were advertised, but nothing's perfect. I picked up one Jigglypuff, one Pikachu, and an iced coffee. And this was my breakfast for the day. Probably a little bit too sweet, but it was all about the experience, not nutrition. The Jigglypuff Donut had a nice strawberry frosting and a cream filled center. Honestly, I have absolutely no idea what flavor the Pikachu one was supposed to be, but the cream center was nice. After that, I continued walking around the Ginza area to burn off all those calories that I just had for breakfast when I came across these really awesome bike racks. I don't know if these are common in other countries, but I've never seen bike racks like these before. It's so nice because you slide your bike right onto them. I'll be honest with you, it really wasn't my intention, but this just pretty much turned into a me eating Japanese food and snacks vlog. So let me show you the last snack I enjoyed while I was over there in Tokyo. So this is one of my absolute favorite Japanese snacks of all time, and it's called Taiyaki. So after buying my Taiyaki, I headed to this local park to sit down and enjoy them. While sitting down at the park, I spotted this really cute pigeon. Look at where he's standing all the way up there by himself, you silly little pigeon. Nah, but for real, he was really cute. So taiyaki are made in the shape of a fish. Unfortunately, I actually forgot to shoot some footage of it before I took a bite. So here is a picture of a taiyaki with no head. The traditional filling of taiyaki is anko, which is a red bean paste like this. And the next most common filling is custard, which is this one. And yes, I did buy two, and I ate both of them by myself. So my time in Tokyo came to an end, and honestly, 
I was so happy being back in Tokyo for the first time in three years. Like every day was just full of happiness and wonder walking around this huge city. Hopefully it won't be three years until I come back again. Ideally, I would love to come back multiple times throughout the year because I've actually only been to Japan during winter. So I would really like to experience the other seasons if I get a chance and hopefully shoot some more fun content for you guys. So I actually shot two other vlogs while I was in Tokyo this time. So please be on the lookout for those in the coming weeks. Tokyo, thank you so much for having me and I hope I can be back again soon. Mata ne!